That one too. It's time. They came out pretty good. All of my uh, winter projects. I'm still, I'm still going because today it's 20 degrees. So it's not like I'm going camping or fishing or cutting grass or gardening or anything. We have to occupy our time, you know. But I have to make more room in the old metal shop, so I need to move some of my creations out of here. I need to move these boxes. And I need to get that done right away, so I'll probably have to break out the tractor to get them moved. So over the long winter months, what happens is the, the, the front part of our main pole barn becomes a catch-all for everything that we don't want to put away because it's cold out. So we just kind of stack it here. <laughs> Some years more than most. This is one of those more than most years. So it's cold out still. And we're going to take advantage of the still cold weather. And before I can move anything out of the metal shop like I need to, I want to make room in here. And that includes digging out this backhoe, getting it put on the tractor, making room in here for the tractor from the tractor barn, Clearing a, lot, clearing a lot of this stuff out of here so I can make room in the metal shop. Right. Does any of that make sense? So we got our work cut out for us today. Ah, uh, this white stuff is salt from the roads. And that needs to be cleaned up. On the very first day I can get the well up and running so we can wash it out and then you know that's why we have rusty trucks here's where i want to put my tractor in front of the boat and of course that's going to be here for a while longer but i'm really looking forward to getting that out this year we kept a lot of this cardboard like this is the cardboard from our new spa our Costco spa that's in the tractor barn that I'm going to use for painting specifically my new rocket stoves and we want to get out the lawnmower if it'll start which I doubt it will but we'll see what happens make some room Ugh. Yeah, no easy task. Look at all that. Just stacked up Christmas decorations, everything. Is, yeah, but we do this every year. You can kind of, I'm warming the tractor up so I can get the tiller off. I gotta take the whole, the entire three point hitch system on my tractor off completely to get the backhoe on it. And it looks like we have more snow moving our way. You can tell by the dark sky off in the distance. We worked in the snow before, so it wouldn't be the first time. I saw this this is the pallet that we got from our Costco spa this is what it came in and as soon as I saw it I knew what I was gonna use it for I'm gonna use it to put my tiller for my tractor on 
and then I can move it around with the uh, forklifts from the Kubota. So I'm going to drop the tiller right on this. And instead of uh, having to drag it around with the, a chain tied to the front end loader, I can just move it uh, with the pallet forks. So that'll be nice. And this should fit nicely too. It's just a, a little uh, compression lever that you pull, pull, and that's that. Now what I need to do is I need to completely disassemble this whole three-point hitch system in its entirety to get the backhoe on it. Then I have to remember where I put all the pieces and parts. Yeah, especially these days where you might not be able to replace them. I'll get this strap down and I'll be able like I said to conveniently carry it around wherever I need to with the pallet forks on the Kubota and that'll be nice I wanted to uh show you guys something because I haven't been able to see that I haven't seen them in any of the uh, hardware stores or Home Depot or anywhere in fact I got these in Vegas somewhere I don't remember exactly where but these this wrench set this socket wrench set has come in so handy for me and if you can get your hands on some do it because they're both deep well sockets and regular sockets all in one and what I mean by that is You see, all the sockets are arranged in such that the bolt will go right through the whole, the whole system. And therefore eliminating the need for a deep well socket or a regular socket set. And I, this, this is so handy. And like I said, I, I really haven't looked, but I do look a lot at tools wherever I go. And I have yet to see anything like this. So this is my go-to whenever I'm not sure if I'm going to need a regular socket or a deep well socket. I just automatically go right to this. So that's what I'm going to use to take this three-point hitch system off. Here's the perfect example of what I was talking about. We have one long screw and one small screw. So... We can use the same socket on both sides. See that? See that? Works out. your leg. There we go. All right, now these 
pins have to come out over here. All right, I took the pins out of these here and reinserted them in the, the, the hitch system so I don't lose them. And this is the last item to go here. And that should complete the process of taking this out. If you don't do this that much like me, best to duct tape the pieces where they go. Not to, to remember where they go, it's pretty obvious where they go, it's so you don't lose them. Getting that hitch off was the easy part. Now I gotta remember how to get the backhoe on it. It's been a few years, so trial and error again. It's one of those things if you don't do all the time, kind of like shooting and other things like that, it's a perishable skill, you forget. So I gotta dig out this backhoe now. Hi honey. Okay, before you uh, hook up the backhoe hydraulics, you, you need to keep the three-point hitch hydraulic system hooked up so that you can align the backhoe. And then, once you have it aligned, that's when you hook up the hydraulics to the backhoe. 
and it's different than the hydraulics like for example a stump grinder it's completely different let me show you the hydraulics for the stump grinder you would keep the loop closed with the three-point hitch system on the tractor which I disconnected and you would use this set of hydraulics instead of completely disconnecting the three-point hitch system hydraulics if that makes any sense in other words the backhoe itself closes the loop it completes the 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 flow to the hydraulic system when you unhook the three-point hitch system hydraulics and connect the backhoe versus using the auxiliary I guess you would call it I'm not sure of any of the technical terms but the auxiliary hydraulics like for example to run my stump grinder so this is what I disconnected here Here's the other end of it here, and it closed the loop over here. That's where it was connected for the three-point hitch system. And all I did was unhook this, which was a three-point hitch system, hook in the male to the backhoe here, and the female to the backhoe there, which then completes the loop for the hydraulics to close the system again making it work whereas these hydraulic auxiliary works on only things like my stump grinder and things like that and there you go easy peasy well it is now after having done it a half a dozen times so now it's time to break out the, uh, what I call the old gasoline operated broom, which is my Echo leaf blower. And try to blow out a bunch of this crap that candy stored all the winter time, right? Hey, that's a nice sweatshirt. Yeah, you bought it for me. <laughs> I have these these hand pumps that pump fuel to winterize your equipment like from your snowblower which I'm getting ready to do I'm getting ready to winterize it and they're like I don't know six to ten bucks each or something like that don't quote me but this is what I was using in the past and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't and you have to hold the the hose down in one end and and guide the other end into where you're pump you know the gas tank or something where you're putting the fuel so I found these at Harbor Freight and I got two of them, one for diesel and one for gas. I guess they're liquid transfer pumps. And this looks like it's gonna make my life a whole lot easier. Like I have to pump the gas out of the snow blower and I'm gonna pump it right into my lawn mower. And this, this should make it a lot easier. I think these were 12 bucks a piece I got two of them you can't beat that if they work I, I don't know if they work but we'll find out right quick yeah it works good boy that beats a hand pump doesn't it now what I'll do is I'll start the uh, snow blower up Make sure there's none left in the carburetor. Okay, because I'm gonna use these so infrequently, I take the batteries out of it. And put it in the next one, market diesel. I'll mark this regular gas or premium on the package. And I'll just 
Keep it in the package where a bunch of uh, dirt doesn't collect around the hose. Now winterize the torpedo heater. It's got diesel in it. I don't think I can reach it up to the tractor though. I'll probably have to put it in a can. like a thousand dollars worth of gas there. <laughs> There now, after several hours, I can finally move my boxes in here and make more room in my metal shop. She, and I helped! She helped. Thanks for coming along with us today. Everything is ready for summer, just about. I have to uh, do some routine services to some equipment, like my lawnmower, things like that. And then away we go. Kodiak Camper. Talk to you later. <laughs>